So, something arrived in the mail today! Something that has been a long time coming. When I first started cosplaying the 8th Doctor in 2012, 8 years of the 8th Doctor, um, I didn't have a sonic screwdriver for him. They had just... They had just... Um, well, Paul McGann had just debuted the Dark Eyes sonic screwdriver for himself, um, made for him by Weta, I think that's how it's pronounced, W-E-T-A, Weta Workshops, so they were a prop making company. And um, they hadn't yet shown the Eighth Doctor's regeneration on screen, didn't think they ever would. And so I was using my ninth and 10th Doctor Sonic screwdriver for when I cosplayed 8. They didn't have a mass-produced uh, 8th Doctor screwdriver. Eventually they made one, but before that um, I bought a 4th Doctor screwdriver for a pretty pricey penny too because they had discontinued those and repainted it for my, the 8th Doctor. Uh, when they eventually did produce a more screen accurate version I, of course, bought it, but, you know, it's close enough, but not quite. Eventually, I bought secondhand an RB Replica's aluminum sonic screwdriver, and when I went to, and that served me pretty well for f several years, but when I went to Gallifrey 1 this year, it broke. The head, the red anode piece came out, and I lost it and Rusp has been very unreliable and uncommunicative about making a replacement part. Like, took him six months just to tell me he didn't have the aluminum for it. So, I've been in the process of upgrading my 8th Doctor costumes, because I have a new job, making a little better money, a lot better money. So I finally bought from a Mr. Ray Phillips. His shop on Etsy is Character Attractions. Um, I think that's the name of it. I will post the link below. Um, but anyway, this is going to be an unboxing slash review of the Dark Eyes, his replica of the Dark Eyes 8th Doctor Sonic. Eight years of cosplaying 8, I finally have one. So where did I put those scissors? Oh, forgot I put them somewhere convenient. So, without further ado, Open, open, open. You know, even this took a darn long time to get here because I think from the tracking notifications, it got sent back to the UK. It got sent to LA and then got sent back to the UK and then sent back to LA again. So I'm not sure what the heck was going on there, but I feel like it's been a long wait for this, even on top of the long time it took me to find. An affordable replica. Well, one that I can afford now. There's a letter. Ah, it's um, instructions on how to change the batteries. It's nice and bubble tightly wrapped in bubble wrap as it should be. You know, I want to say, just to build up anticipation, the Dark Eye Sonic is not my favorite design. Oh yeah, I did have a 3D printed replica that, you know, it's just, I mean, it did, it did its job for Gallifrey, but now I'm ready for a big boy replica of the 8th Doctor Sonic. And it's just not my favorite design. I like what they were going for. I like that steampunk. Um, I like that it's got the brass and the wood. I don't like the fins around the crystal. I think they're too bulky, and as I was trying to carry it around in my breast pocket, kept poking me in the chest. It could have stood to, I think if they had trimmed the fins down, the, the six fins around the crystal, um, it would have been such a, a much more sensible design. They just needed to, I don't think they considered, it's like the 12th Doctor said, sonic screwdrivers spoil the lining of your coat. And in this case, this one does. Oh. That's right, it does come with a stand. Oh, and he's numbered it too. This is his 34th Dark Eyes. Oh my. Wow. That's real wood. Oh. 
Oh, 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 this is so cool. Like I said, it's got this big, these six bulky fins that, oh, and I, okay, I'm going to scoot closer so you, everyone can get a better look at this. This is some quality craftsmanship here. Um, I know a guy who makes these out of real brass and wood, like, they're not just replicas, they are, like, actual okay they are replicas but they're like the real deal and he's charging he's asking for his his asking price is eighteen hundred dollars uh which sensible considering the materials he's using just way way out of my budget um but the, oh you know what this has got one of the wires is already broken free from the crystal um well the crystal i can th i think it's 3d printed uh, this probably can be fixed easily with some glue, super glue, something. Let's see if it works. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, it makes sounds too. I mean, it's getting washed out on the camera, but it is blue. It's a very pretty, brilliant shade of blue. Okay, this this has got a weird delay when I press the button between when I press the button and when the sound goes off. And, but you know. The sound doesn't matter for photo shoots. Or maybe I just stop pressing harder? No, it's... Oh, I love this. Oh, this is so much cooler in person. I mean... For, I probably should have put out, pulled out my 3D printed version for comparison's sake, but... You know, gosh darn it, I don't remember where I put that. Um... I just moved into this room. Just finished painting it. Everything's a mess here. I'm filming in this corner because it's the only filmable corner. Um, did I? S no, it wouldn't be. No, never mind. Uh, but maybe I'll post up a comparison picture later. But oh boy, this is oh this is so pretty. It's not loud, but again, I really don't care about the sounds. I mean, it helps for the role play. The feeling like the doctor roleplay element when you're going out and playing cosplaying at cons or whatever but for photo shoots and I'm definitely using this at the next photo shoot um, it doesn't it doesn't need to make noise at all but oh not sure how where is this is it where's yeah it's coming out of the the, the back here so, I'm not, I think that's where the speaker is. It's not loud, it's not exactly a show accurate sound effect, but hey, it buzzes. So, I'm making a quick edit, because um, I just realized there is something else I can contribute to this review. Um, as I mentioned, it's a bulky screwdriver, so we're doing an uh, inner pocket lining test. As you can see, well, I can definitely feel its presence. I'm never not going to forget it's in here while I'm wearing my Dark Eyes jacket. But, um, it seems to fit a bit more comfortably than the 3D printed version. Well, we'll see how it feels after a day of wearing this, this coat at a convention with the screwdriver in. Assuming we ever get to go to conventions again. So just for a size comparison sake, let's take a few Sonics off my arsenal. Oh, and in case anyone is wondering, the 9th and 10th, because uh, I was one, uh, trying to figure this out. I'm very indecisive about picking favorites of anything, but I do believe the 9th and 10th Sonic is probably my favorite Sonic design because it's compact. The Chipnall, or, or no, the Moffat era screwdrivers, 11 and 12s, way too over designed for me way too big and bulky I do this design grew on me and I do love the spinny lights but the first time I saw it I thought that was way too busy and when I first saw 11 screwdriver I thought well that's too bulky and trying way too hard to be a uh, lightsaber and it's the claws as cool as they are 
don't really make any, any much sense. So this is compact. This is conservative. It's just, it's sleek. It does what it needs to do. I like it. This is probably my my favorite screwdriver design. I'm not sure if that's because this is the first Sonic screwdriver I remember on screen because I do remember class a little bit of Classic 2 from my, on PBS when I was a real little kid, but um, I didn't remember the Sonic screwdriver. And it wasn't that big a thing back in the Classic Who, not like it is on the new show. So this was my technically my first Sonic screwdriver. So I'm not sure if that's why it's my favorite objective, if, I, if I'm being completely objective. But anyway, I'm getting off onto a tangent here. For size comparison, um, it's this is thicker. It's definitely heavier because, you know, it's, it's not a mass-produced cheap plastic toy. Um, it's also longer even when this is stretched out. Compared to the 12th Doctor Sonic, which is comparable in, uh, for lack of a better term, girth and length. <laughs> I also love how this one has different colors. I was expecting, after a blue and a green emitter, I was expecting purple to be the next color for some reason. I like that you have, this has different colors for different functions, even if you know, they're never clear on what functions or do what. But you know, you have that option for extra... extraness. Still waiting for a purple Sonic though, I think that'll look cool. But, this, with a little bit of glue in the crystal, I mean, in the wire, and I honestly don't see how that can be avoided with this design. Like, this is supposed to be wires tat attached to a crystal that's asking for something that's going to break all the time from a design engineering standpoint. I mean it looks cool but anyway. I kind of wish they, the designers would take mass market toys into account more often because that would just be more considerate. Especially for if these are toys our kids are going to be playing with, you want something that they won't break so easily. And obviously, this this was not designed to be a mass market toy or something that kids would play with. I know it's not probably never going to happen that they'll make a mass market version of this, but it would be nice. I mean, I don't need one now, but it would be cool. This is Lethargic Action Hero, signing out.